Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Reno David Brooks says Christians who support Troy Moore are guilty of heresy. During the presidency of Republican Donald Trump, there are many self-proclaimed Republicans who have been showing their true colors and blocking President Trump's conservative agenda. One such Reno is New York Times columnist David Brooks, who frequently rails against President Trump and the people and the issues he supports. During a recent episode on the government-funded PBS show PBS NewsHour, Brooks went so far as to claim that any Christians who support Republican Senate candidate Troy Moore are heretics. On the show, David first chided liberals, saying, If I could add one thing on the, first on the Clinton thing, I think it's, we just have to look back and say the people who ignore the testimony of Kathleen Willey and Juanita Bordrick helped set the stage for this. And the Democrats who defended Clinton in those cases, they helped set the atmosphere for what we're seeing and for the behavior that Harvey Weinstein and the rest can get away with. However, this fake Republican saved his most poisonous darts for Christian conservatives, ranting, The second thing to be said is, there is a word for what defenders of Roy Moore are doing, the people who said they were votes for him nonetheless, and, well, two words. One word is idolatry, and the other word is heresy, because the people who are putting, who are going to sacrifice morality for politics are making an idol out of politics. He wasn't done. He then claimed about Christians, they're saying politics is higher than morality. And no honest person can possibly believe that. And if you're putting politics above personal morality, above the way we treat each other, above the nature of your own soul, you're just, you're making an idol out of it. And that is the ultimate in heresy. And to see, I saw a tweet from Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son, defending more, you know, sort of, oh, they're all a bunch of hypocrites up there. It's just appalling. It's just, it's almost mind-boggling that people who, especially people who have been steeped in any faith could make this kind of fundamental error, which is warned against again and again in the Bible, and to be heretics. They're heretics. Do you think David Brooks should get kicked out of the Republican Party? Harry Sheffield crushes CNN panel with the truth of what Hillary did to Bill Clinton's victims. Conservative guest Carrie Sheffield hit CNN's Brooke Baldwin and her liberal buddies with the truth about Hillary Clinton. And they did not like it. The mainstream media has suddenly started attacking Bill Clinton for things that conservative media have been attacking him for years. However, they did not like it when Sheffield exposed Hillary's part in all of this. It was case after case after case. And Hillary Clinton, she victim shamed. You want to talk about listening to women? She called Monica Lewinsky, who was an intern at the time, started Sheffield before being interrupted by the angry CNN panel. I have a problem blaming the women for the men's behavior. It is not fair to do that. It is not fair to do that, said one panelist. However, Sheffield did not blame Hillary for Bill's behavior. He accused Hillary of covering up his behavior and threatening his victims. You should listen to the women said Sheffield before being interrupted again. Yes, you should, but blaming Hillary Clinton in a conversation about Bill Clinton's behavior is not appropriate. We should focus on the men's choices and the men's behavior, and all men need to reflect upon their behavior, not just famous ones and not just politicians. This is a cultural problem not something that we should just put on Hillary Clinton's shoulders. She lost to Trump, the guy on tape confessing to assault, shouted Sir Lena Maxwell. Okay, Hillary Clinton went after Lewinsky, called her a bimbo, replied Sheffield. Breaking Hillary Clinton now works for a teen sex magazine. Everybody around the world knows that Democrat Hillary Rodham Clinton is currently unemployed. After all, she did lose to outsider Donald Trump in humiliating, excruciating fashion, 
something that virtually no polls predicted. However, Hillary has found ways of keeping busy and trying to stay relevant. In a recent turn of events that shows how depraved Hillary would have been as our president had she been elected, she recently agreed to work for Teen Vogue magazine as a guest editor. As many may recall, Teen Vogue, which has a readership of girls aged 11 to 17, featured a few months ago an instruction article teaching girls how to be safely sodomized by men. Despite intense criticism from people of all political stripes, the magazine ever published an apology. Announced Teen Vogue about the special issue that Hillary will be putting together, Hillary Rodham Clinton is the guest editor of our Volume 4 issue, on newsstands nationally December 5. They added, Today, we're announcing a very special issue of Teen Vogue, guest edited by at Hillary Clinton, the first ever female presidential candidate nominated by a major party, a woman who sits at the center of a historic paradigm shift. More than this, they stated about Clinton, she will keynote at the first ever Teen Vogue Summit in conversation with actress, scholar, and activist Yara Shahidi. Shahidi plays a college student in the ABC sitcom Blackish, who earlier this year made the argument that segregated black only college dorms is a positive thing. Is Hillary everything that's wrong with our country? CNN's Simone Sanders claims that all accusers must be believed, no matter what. Every human being is capable of lying. That is something that is obvious to most. But according to one of CNN's most annoying anchors Simone Sanders, women accusing men of sexual assault are never lying. And they shouldn't feel compelled to prove themselves. Look, I think it's in the court of law, that is true. We are innocent until proven guilty in the court of law in the United States of America. But we are not talking about the court of law, and we have to what we are really talking about is addressing our sexual culture in this country," said Sanders. And, we have put the onus of belief on the victims in this sense, like if the victims can prove that this happened to them, then we will then, the public will believe them. And I don't think that's how we should be operating," she said. And I'm so happy that now, the media and greater society has come around to say, well, actually if women are stepping up, and not just women, because men have been victims of sexual assault as well. If people are stepping up and saying that this happened to them, and they have really consistent and just gut-wrenching, real stories we must believe them," she said. And that is the lens we should take to look at this. We have to examine our sexual culture and it should not be on the onus of victims to prove something happened to them," she said. She better hope no women accuse her of sexual assault. Government just banned Christians from adopting children because their beliefs are incompatible. The presidential administration of Donald Trump and his allies among conservatives have been pushing hard to create a religious freedom protections so that America's Christians can practice their religion, as made clear by the Bill of Rights, without harassment from politically correct liberals. Perhaps our neighbors in Canada ought to follow America's lead, as governments there have begun to discriminate against Christians who want to adopt children. In the province of Alberta, for example, a husband and wife were denied the right to adopt a baby because the government did not agree with their opposition to gay marriage. Detailed CBC News, the Edmonton married couple say they submitted their application last year and passed a required course for potential adoptive parents. But during a follow-up by officials this year, the couple say they ran into trouble when they answered questions about sexuality. The couple said that workers from the government made them defend their Christian beliefs regarding homosexuality and same-sex marriage. They claimed, according to a court affidavit, the casework supervisor explained that our religious beliefs regarding sexuality were incompatible with the adoption process. The casework supervisor said this stance was the official position of the Alberta government. Thankfully, the nonprofit Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms is working to have the couple's case reviewed, saying, the respondent, Alberta, requires citizens to profess agreement within support for its state's sanctioned beliefs in sexuality and gender.
making determinations about who is suitable to adopt on the basis of their sincere religious beliefs violates this couple's right to religious freedom and equality under the law. Do you think America needs to pass religious freedom laws so that something like this does not happen in our country? Breaking, informant on Hillary's Russia scandal has video of briefcases full of cash. Liberals love to take solace in their belief that special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into President Donald Trump's supposed Russia ties will end up getting Trump kicked out of the White House and maybe even thrown in jail. What they seem to have complete horse blinders about is the fact that Trump's 2016 presidential adversary Hillary Clinton is falling deeper and deeper in trouble for her role in the treasonous sale of the Uranium One mining company to a Russian government agency. According to an investigation by reporter John Solomon, there is video that proves Hillary's involvement. Said Solomon to Sean Hannity about FBI informant William D. Campbell, H. She gathered so much information, there are videotapes where the Russians are opening up briefcases full of cash, these are the people that we then gave uranium to, that we then give nuclear fuel contracts to. Campbell formerly was employed as a lobbyist for a Russian firm and he is slated to testify about his experiences in Russia in front of Congress next week. Said William, I have worked with the Justice Department undercover for several years, and documentation relating to Uranium One and political influence does exist and I have it. Detailed investigative reporter Sarah Carter of Circa, the bribery schemes included delivering thousands of dollars in yellow envelopes laundering tens of thousands of dollars in briefcases or wiring thousands of dollars through shell companies through the Seychelles Islands, Latvia, Cyprus, and Switzerland, to name a few. Do you think this evidence will finally take Hillary down?